Hellworld just released with massive success. It was marketed as Pokemon with guns, but that is not the case. It is still a good game, but it shares less DNA with Pokemon than you might suspect. Pals are creatures like Pokemon and if you don't know what Pokemon is, then you are either a liar or statistically unrelevant. Those creatures like in Pokemon can be weakened through attacks, then captured. They have levels and skills and can be trained or given new skills. Breeding is also possible, but this is where the similarities with Pokemon end. For the other two games, Pearl World is based on or was inspired from, we have to take a look at the game the devs have worked on before. This is the intro of Graftopia. Yeah, it's pretty on the nose with the Breath of the Wild reference. Palworld and Graftopia are practically the same game, even though Graftopia uses Unity and Palworld uses Unreal Engine 5, which in itself is not a bad thing. Games can be similar. When Graftopia came out, many pointed out that this is stealing or plagiarism. There is a difference between those things and paying homage or being inspired from. Having a cinematic intro or being able to climb like in Breath of the Wild is a mechanic, and that is usually not copyrightable. Craftopia also adds much on top on Breath of the Wild, that it becomes its own game. And yes, you also have a collider, and Zelda does not own that concept. Palworld also has all of these things, literally, up to the point where even the game world looks very similar to Craftopia. The building system is best described as open block based, which is also taken from our third game we are coming to shortly. Open block based means that you can place a foundation anywhere, but then adding two is always like a block. You have four connection points and that makes it very awkward if you want to join two platforms that you have built in your base. The same was true for Ark Survival Evolved, which is our mystery game number three. In Ark, you play as a buff survivor on an island with prehistoric creatures. I will call all of them dinos, even though many of them aren't dinosaurs. Just for the convenience. The building system is virtually the same, which you can see on the screen. In Ark, you beat up dinos and force feed them until they like you. It's also a taming game and you can use dinos for mining, exploring, building, lumbering and and and. Dinos have stats, can level and you can ride most of them. When you level up you get technology points and you can use them to unlock recipes. You can also find rare items and rare recipes on dinos or cages. And higher rarity means better stats. Now to Palworld. And it's the same. Even the menu looks similar and you can also use special recipes. In Palworld you can invest in your character stats, even in the most useless one, which is crafting speed. And you can do so too in Ark Survival Evolved. They copied even the useless crafting speed stat. While this covers 80% of Palworld, that does not mean it's a bad ripoff. Combining two existing things objects or ideas and creating something new out of it is something we collectively have done for millennia. Some people even argue that this is the whole learning process of each human. Some people somewhere at one time invented bread. Others found out about tomatoes and cheese and now we combine those things and we get pizza. What I usually find most interesting about games that are heavily inspired by others is two things. What do they add on top? And are they a better alternative than either of those games they have taken from? What currently is present in PAL world is sadly not better than either of the games. Exploration is better in Breath of the Wild. And the taming and progression is better in Ark. PAL world, however, changes how it uses its creatures. Instead of riding them, which you can also do, you use them as slaves. They mine, produce, build and keep your factory going. This autonomous acting of the pals is something added to the mix. It's cool, interesting and new. Some of my creatures are ill, hurt, sick or have fractures and I still can force them to mine ore for me. 
glorious. This also opens up a nice segue for me to introduce oddities about the game. Pal World looks nice, but it is dark. Many people tell you how their friends got eaten by pals, and many descriptions hint that the pals regularly kill their owners. There's also currently no story, unlike in Pokemon. Okay, you can stop laughing now. Pokemon, all jokes aside, has a story. It's the same every time and just stupid, but there is clearly a starting point, some events and an ending. Most importantly, the Pokemon you encounter get stronger with your progression as a direct consequence of a linear storyline. You can guarantee that the last place you visit will have strong Pokemons and the players up to the task. Palworld only has a starting point and uses a similar world design to Ark. You can start at different islands or places and there is a semi-random ensemble of pals roaming in each zone. They only randomize inside the habitat. This worked great for Ark because each dino had a max level and sometimes you were lucky and a dino spawned with max level and you wanted to tame those dinos. In Palworld, however, each zone also has a level, and you will find weak creatures all over the place, never strong ones. This makes training them a real hassle. Some zones appear to have a higher level, but farming high level pals is not in the game, and I think they should have stick to the Ark formula in that regard, or thought about how to level up your pals. You can take up to 5 pals with you, and only those level up. In your base there might be as well 15 pals working, but they are stuck with a low level because farming and mining does not give enough. Usually not a problem, but your base becomes the target of frequent attacks and those attacks are not scaled to your pal level. In my base, with around level 8 pals, I frequently got attacked by roaming pals of level 20, which as you can guess is always a massacre there needs to be a better way to train them early on. My suspicion is that the devs really liked the Pokemon mod for Ark Survival Evolved and wanted to make a game out of it. Also a bit shitty, Craftopia, the game they worked on before, is still in early access. They started another game while not having completed the first one. That's a bad sign. Besides the aforementioned level up options, what I think they need to add is a better way to traverse the game world. The only pal that has a good speed is the direwolf and I was disappointed by the flying mount. It's very slow and it feels like riding a drunken cow with helium balloons. The whole aquatic sector needs to be added. There are water pals, but you cannot fight them on open water, because you and your pals consume stamina when in water. With that limitation, there can never be a deep ocean zone or underwater pals. My biggest point for last. If you market the game as Pokemon with guns, make the guns viable. Guns are near useless, first because they take too much resources and don't deliver more damage than your pals. But most importantly, there is nothing to do with having a pal army. Right now you can only defend your base and that's boring and random. Instead there should be something like raids, when you take up to 20 pals with you and all equipped like infantry. Overtaking enemy bases or expeditions would be another great way to use your pals. Right now you can only level up 5 pals at a time, very slowly and then they rot in your base because maybe, someday you get raided. Right now, the game is not Pokemon with guns, but Ark with Pokemon and Breath of the Wild movement. Now to the conclusion. Should you buy Pal Vault? Right now it's underwhelming in terms of the core mechanics. There's promise, but I don't pay for that promise with hope, but with hard cash. If you want a cool taming game, look for Ark. And if you want a game to explore, then Zelda or Genshin or all the other games that are right now similar. I would hold off right now, especially because the devs made the extremely suspicious move of starting another early access game while not having finished the first one, which means they have effectively abandoned it. That should raise all the red flags. I hope you liked this quick look and a like and subscribe would be nice. Farewell.